Alan, you wanted to kick things off. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, um, so we, I saw Barbie uh, last night. Uh, you guys in San Diego uh, saw it as well. Uh, it's just basically a nice little tale about Barbie land. Uh, and uh, she has to travel to the real world. Hey, by the way, guys, what did you think of Asian Barbie? Was there an Wait, Asian Barbie? There wasn't, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this movie tries to be diverse. It, it, it goes out of its way to be diverse. And guess what? Not a goddamn Asian in it except for Ken. <laughs> Stupid Ken. And guess what? Hey. If anything, there's merit there because, hey, who can we get to play stupid Ken? I know, Simu Lu. <laughs> but uh, no, not a single Asian Barbie in this movie. And this is the thing, this is the thing I learned 40 years ago is that Asians don't count. You know, you can talk about diversity, you can talk about inclusion and equity and all that stuff, but Asians need not apply. And this is this is this is me watching this movie, thinking the whole thing, not a goddamn Asian. Barbie in this movie, and we're very beautiful people, <laughs> especially the women, not the men. And um, <laughs> and uh, you know, it's I, I don't know how they get away with this stuff. I, I you know, the, look, we just had a Supreme Court case where where you know they're allowing Asians to go back to college now, um, and it just frustrates the hell out of me. And uh, you know, this this talk of of inclusion is. I've known it forever. It's it's bullshit and it's hypocrisy. And this movie is the example of that. And that's me thinking, you know, they're trying to make this message. And I'll keep thinking of, yeah, but you don't care that my people are not in it. And this is indicative of all of Hollywood. You know, we've, we've talked about it. You know, when you talk about diversity, it's, it's white, it's black. Uh, maybe it's brown and it's definitely not yellow. And uh, so this is, this is why, this is, you know, my perspective uh, while watching this movie. And it was really hard to want to at least try to dig down and figure out the message that they're trying to get across, which is a whole other mess. But I just want to talk about the racial diversity, the racial issues of this film and say it's, it's, it's total hypocrisy. And, uh, and this is not the single example of it. This happens all the time. You know, uh, I'm sure Polly understands this as much as I do. Well, I'll, I'll uh, to launch right in. Uh, uh, I, I, I know what you're talking about. It just, it seemed like it was diverse, but it was missing that element. Um, the quick, quick thoughts, quick thoughts on Barbie Dante. You'll start on I'll, I'll launch in. Sure. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I'm going to kind of piggyback off of what Alan <laughs> said. Um, it, it was, what was weird to me was that. It, okay. This was just a fun movie and you know, it didn't really have the message. I wouldn't have cared all that much. The thing that's weird to me about this movie is that it is, you know, for lack of a better word, woke uh, or woke ish. Anyway, uh, it's weird that Barbie was this white blonde Barbie and the focus of the movie was about this Latin mom and her Latin child. And you're telling me that this Latin mom wasn't giving her Latin daughter a Latin Barbie to play with, which means Marvel Robbie would not have been a star of the film. It would have been a Latin actress. Right. That was weird to me. It's like, so you're telling me that uh, these this Latin family, uh, you know, worshipped this white Barbie doll with blonde hair and blue eyes. <laughs> um, and, and that's just, that's if you dig deep into the movie. Uh, you really, there's not, you don't have to even dig that deep. You know, they called themselves out uh, near the end of the movie about that point. There's, I, a, there's a narration from Helen Mirren saying maybe Margot Robbie wasn't the right person to no, make this No, you're point. right. That did happen. Yeah. <laughs> So they I mean, they knew it, <laughs> and they just went with it anyways. Uh, my broad thoughts about the movie is the first hour is actually pretty entertaining. The first hour is kind of fun with the Barbie land, and then Barbie begins to question her existence. Ever think about death? And it was I, I thought I thought that part was fun. This, but I will say this: this is not a movie necessarily for children. I don't think the kids are going to like this. Is a, a this is a movie for adult women who uh, who are uh, aware of terms like uh, uh, the, the sort of college discussion over feminism and the mm -hmm. patriarchy. So the first hour is kind of this entertaining thing. And as soon as that the mom and the daughter enter it, that's when the movie kind of goes downhill. It's it's too long. It's two hours and it felt long. Yeah. But and in the second half of the movie is where they lost me because that's mm -hmm. when it started to turn into this political statement. I was loving the film and it was just sort of this 
funny existential, a toy questioning its existence, which is kind of also, you know, premise of Toy Story from Pixar. Okay. But, um, when it got to that second half, I, I, just, I couldn't tell you how many times I looked at my watch. Like, how long is this? Please don't be over two hours. It was just around two hours ish, but it felt a lot longer. And it just, the, the way that the movie ends. Yeah. Not to get into spoilers. Okay. I'm a, a brief spoiler, a brief spoiler. Okay. So anybody you want to check out or mute yourself, mute me for like a minute. Here we go. The movie ends with Barbie going to the gynecologist because of her parts. That's how the film ends. I, 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 I mean, it's this movie, and we saw it with a crowd that really loved the film. I mean, they were they were whooping it up, they were laughing. But I will say this: the second half of the movie, it just got it just got a little quieter. It became like sort of a luxury independent film, and I was like, oh, this would be interesting. But this is like this. I, I think what's going to happen is a lot of uh, uh, a lot of families are going to take their young daughters or just kids to see this movie. This is not a movie for kids. This is definitely not yeah. a movie for kids. No. I will say this: Ryan Gosling actually did a very good job as Ken, and I whole like the I, I like the whole Kenland thing. I thought Kenland <laughs> was kind of fun. Kingdom, Kingdom. So it's just <laughs> so it's 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 like this mixed bag of like I I have to admit I was entertained in the first half of the film. It just when it got a bit too luxury, I was kind of checking out. Yeah, um, I mean, there's definitely a message there, and the de- the message is going to hit you over the head like a lead pipe. Yeah. Right. You know, and you know, we could talk about that messaging. I mean, this is this is how I I approach these political debates uh, or these political issues. If you were to flip the script and replace the main characters with the opposing side and vice versa, what kind of movie would you have? I mean, let's think about the movie in general. Uh, we're in Barbie Land. It's run by women. Uh, it's a matriarchy. So then they go to the real world where Ken finds out that the matriarchy that the real world is a patriarchy it's run by men and so he comes back to barbie land and turns the matriarchy into a patriarchy so how do we solve that by bringing it back and become a matriarchy which seems to me the the exact opposite of what you want you're just you're just taking one group pit them against the other group when that group takes over the other group goes back in the battle and takes it over again and this idea of of working together of being a community is lost on this entire film exactly you know, it's like the Supreme Court is nine women. Uh, they go to the real world. Hey, guess what? Uh, our Supreme Court is half women. You know, and it shows it just shows that that, you know, no one has progressed over time. You know, that 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 racial issues, that gender issues have progressed, has evolved to a, to a level that is far better than it was when I was a kid back in the 70s and 80s. And, uh, you know, you know, what's funny, though, Um now that you bring uh, the Asian Barbie up, Alan, uh, there was a trans Barbie, and there was no Asian Barbie. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> there was right. a, there, there was, was a, a transgender Barbie. There was a normal no, Barbie too, <laughs> and no Asian and no Barbie. Asian Barbie. Yeah. <laughs> so it's so it's it, it, this is a weird mixed bag. I will say this: I do think that um, my enjoyment of the film was helped by the fact that the audience actually enjoyed it as well. So that was surprising, but. Um, just I feel like maybe if you go in knowing this, you can kind of check that out. But to me, as soon as uh, as soon as the mom and the daughter entered the picture, the movie went downhill from there for me. Yeah. And, and there you go. I um, was I was out from the beginning because I couldn't see myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, what would you rate it out of 10, uh, Dante? Oh, man. Uh, oof. I'm going to say a, honestly like a four. I'll give it a four. I'll be fair. A four. Okay. Alan? Yeah. Uh, well, let me, let me just say that the review is on uh, Film Threat, and oh, cool. fi- and Film Threat's score is an eight. What? What? Uh, <laughs> who, who reviewed it? Bradley. Bradley <laughs> reviewed it, and and we're talking about you know Film Threat is a diverse set of writers and reviewers. Fair enough. And so uh, you know, Bill loved it, and I I let him write it, uh, but personally, I would give it a three. Okay. All right. Wait. Now I want to see this because like. <laughs> Yeah, one of the quotes that uh, that Bradley puts in there is that uh, those who are anti woke won't like it, and he is right. He is one hundred percent right. Yeah. Okay. So, so they you gotta go. hit the read more button. I'm gonna hit the read more button and get yeah. through the ads. We have too many ads on the website. <laughs> it, Look at this. Is it anti woke or we're just tired of it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I think people are just I. 
I think people are tired of. I mean, this is full woke. Is. The movie is full blown woke. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, there you go. Look at look at all these. One point for Margot Robbie. Being hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and, actually, that, and that's why I gave it a four because Margot Robbie is very hot in the film. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, there was a discussion on Twitter about like Margot Robbie being mid. I one hundred percent disagree with that. <laughs> I think Margot Robbie's very no, no, no. She's, it, sexy. she's mid without makeup. That was the whole point. So what? <laughs> and she's no, definitely not no, mid without no, makeup. No, Give me a no. break. She's hotter without makeup. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, hey, but, by the way, it, it, you know, we need to acknowledge the fact that we are three men. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who are talking way, about sure, this. sure, that's yeah. fair. We are not the target demographic yes, for the Barbie movie. So the fact that, what'd you give it? A four out of 10? You gave three. it three out of 10. I'm going to say five out of 10 because of the first half. If I was going to rate it, the first half is genuinely entertaining. It's when the mother and daughter enter the picture that the film takes a, takes a, a big, turn like a 180 to like wh what is this movie about again so um but and, 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 and in all fairness america Ferrera was really good in the film so even though like chris said it, it does take you out of it when the mom and daughter uh appear america Ferrera was very good yeah but but her character would not buy an asian barbie that's my problem <laughs> it's that's intersectional cool. feminism all the way big worm for 10 hail all hail all barbie should have been elf Barbie is absurd in the real mm. world, but her values uh, end up changing the people she meets there. Could have been uplifting. That would have made tons of tons of money, live long and prosper. That's that's well, one thing. That big worm. That's one thing that that I, I kept thinking about at the end of the movie. But is like, what is what is Mattel's current opinion about their product these days? Right, right. You know, I mean, you know, I have my wife huge barbie fan in fact she for two years she was uh barbie for mattel she would do appearances for barbie and so and she fit the classic the classic look the classic image i told you this you married barbie yes i married barbie <laughs> i had sex with barbie That's all right. uh, <laughs> but, but, oh, <laughs> Oh, there you so go. look at my daughter's Alan's face right daughter now. Right there. Right there. <laughs> right there. Oh my God. Alan. Hi, Dad. I miss you. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Oh man. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, what is, you know, are they trying to tank the company like Disney is as well? Uh, I don't know. I mean, do they understand who buys their product, who bought their product? Just the fact that, you know, you, you know, America Ferreira, her character bought the white Barbies and played with them and loved them. I mean, what does that say about, you know, the you know, Rachel Ziegler talked about, you know, people criticizing her for being the, the Colombian Snow White. And then she posts all these pictures of her as a child doing cosplay as these white princesses. I mean, what are I, I don't understand the messaging at all. Yeah. You know, apparently. You know, these kids 20 years ago, they saw themselves as these princesses so much so that they wanted to dress up like them. What, what's going on today? No, there, there's no doubt the marketing for this film. Mm -hmm. Genius. It's genius. I worked in marketing for 20 years. I'm telling you, the marketing was amazing. Uh, it uh, So much so we bought into it. Yeah, we bought into the marketing. Yeah, yeah we did. Uh, well, I, I, I got to tell you my my experience at my theater. Uh, <laughs> saw, I was at saw it in Orange County. Uh, same as you, uh, most of the women there were, were in pink. And uh, there's a moment at the end of the second act where kind of America Ferreira gives this speech that uh, kind of, uh, you know, gives Barbie new motivation to, to stand up for themselves and take, retake uh, Barbie land. While that was happening, uh, I would say about six teenagers came into our theater and I think they were playing hide and seek from one theater to the next. And so during that whole time, they're like these kids running around in front of the screen, you know, kind of checking. I guess they were playing hide and seek maybe, and they were looking for someone. Um, but, but because this, they were bored, because I, yeah. I guarantee yeah. kids are going to be bored by this movie. Yeah. And you know, all so, the ideas are going to go over their head, even when they're being indoctrinated with a lot of and, this and, stuff. It's, and this is the weird thing, because I have no idea if this was regarding the movie or not, but I would say 10 people walk, got up during that speech, got up, walked out, and then. And then I'm not sure if they came back or if they were part of that hide and seek group or something, but uh, it was really distracting. And this is, this reminds me of when I was a teen, when people were just starting, were, were 
you would watch a movie, people would be yelling at the screen, throwing popcorn at the screen and stuff like that. It's- well, I'm glad we saw a later screening because our screening was like at 9 p.m. and there weren't any kids at that screening. And no. I don't know that any kids seeing this movie would have enjoyed it. I can't mm-hmm. imagine a young girl who plays with Barbies seeing this movie and going, what is this movie about? Uh, by the way, I'm seven years old playing with Barbies. I want to see a fun Barbie movie. And she goes to the gynecologist at the end. Um, see, that's, that's, what, that, that's what's weird for me is – Mattel, why did Mattel sign off on this? Like, how does how does this movie help their brand? Like, this movie isn't going to want to make little girls play with Barbies. So if your company is selling these toys, how does this movie help you at all? Yeah. yeah. Love film threat. Also love that at the end of the movie, Barbie held all of the all of the Kens hostage until real women got more power. Equality is not good enough. Oh, that's interesting point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's a, a weird. Well, I mean, message that was always the battle when I was growing up. When it came to civil rights and the women's movement, it was it the battle was equality, and, and now it seems like it's revenge. Yes, exactly. And this is what I say to people that like people on certain sides of the uh, uh, politics, like, do you want progress? Do you want actual progress or do you want revenge? And it feels like based on the rhetoric that we see so often, so casually thrown around, except in real life. It's really bizarre. When you walk around in real life, people that are keyboard uh, uh, warriors, they they fall meekly aside in real life. And the things they say online are, to me, just abhorrent. Uh, and so... Uh, and and it, ju- it doesn't just apply to the women's movement. That applies to race. Mm-hmm. It applies to sexuality. Uh, yeah. It's more about getting back at the person, right? Getting back at the group that kept us down versus pr- actual progress. Yeah. Where we can all just sort of hang out and whatever. And we can put on a BIPOC panel at San Diego yeah, Comic-Con right. without any... Without uh, trying. Yeah, without, without even trying. without even trying. Just I just invited people on yeah. who I thought have interesting points of view that I that I believe would genuinely contribute and help uh, a, a, a a new new indie filmmakers yeah. that are coming up on the scene. Well, and, I, I mean so, I think we need to stop talking about this or Dante won't get his reparations money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you know what's funny too is the people who are making these comments about uh, you know, certain groups. This is more of a BIPOC uh, panel right here. Right, right. And I've seen on most of y'all's YouTube channel. So, yeah, I know. I, 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 yeah, I'm just, I'm just sort of tired of it being such a focus because I feel like it's focused on the wrong thing. Anyways, all right, back to Barbie. So, back to Barbie. <laughs> back to Barbie, real quick. So, we gave like, look, I gave it the highest rating. I mean, you know, uh, it's still, yeah, it's, I mean, a five is walking the line, basically. Yeah, yeah, no, because, because that first half is so fun that, I, I, I felt like, but you're right. Um, someone in the chat talked about how it could have been, uh, you know, a common commentary on materialism, mm-hmm. except that defeats the purpose of selling a bunch of Barbie crap. There is, there are more tie-ins. I think I, I think I might have sent this to you. Um, the, all the Barbie tie-ins, there's like Cold Stone Creamery has like a Barbie flavored ice cream. I have no idea what it tastes like, uh, but it's it's th- th- just the marketing tie-ins are insane, but they're all targeting. Frankly, it's not targeting young girls. It's targeting adult women, all the yeah. stuff with Barbie. Yeah. We were hanging out last night with Anna, that Star Wars girl. And, and by the way, Anna, that Star Wars girl, I'm calling you out. We're having a debate about RRR. It's going to be on <laughs> Nina Infinity's channel in the next coming weeks. Be prepared. And even though Anna and I vehemently disagree about RRR and the merits of that film. Uh, we hang out and whatever. She was dressed up like she had a Barbie hat. She was dressed in full pink. She was, she, she was, uh, Anna was full on Barbie mode and that's fine. But what I'm saying is she is the target demographic. I also, uh, believe that <clears throat> she didn't like the film. So, um, mm-hmm. Anna, that star Wars girl, shout out to her and her channel. Check out, uh, that chant, her, her review. So and whatnot. You've got three older dudes saying, yeah. I didn't like Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> so t- take our opinion with a grain of salt. I will say, I can't deny I was not entertained in the first half. Now, I, uh, the bigger. Wait, wait, Chris, are you saying the movie wasn't for us? 
Yeah, I'm saying it wasn't for us. Well, why would they make a movie like that? <laughs> I, 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 you know what? I like the Ken parts of the movie. The Ken parts were awesome. Uh, let's talk about box office here. Um, oh, let, before let we just go to Oppenheimer. Okay, I, ahead, I just want to make one. Sure, you sure. know, we talked about it could have been about materialism. Honestly, it could have been about feminism, like classic feminism. You know, the Betty Friedan type of feminism. But I don't, I don't think this is a movie that necessarily Betty Friedan would have liked. You know, it, it's not. I don't think it really is, it really addressed the issues that of feminism that needed to be talked about uh, back in the day. I don't know. What do we think this is going to do box office wise? I uh, I will just say that it's going to beat Oppenheimer. It's it will beat to, Oppenheimer. Yes, it, it will beat Oppenheimer for two reasons. One, it's just I think I think the two completely different audiences. I think Oppenheimer is going to have legs. I think it's going to sustain over the weeks because it's playing in premium format theaters. Problem with Oppenheimer, uh, you can see Barbie twice for the amount of time you can see Oppenheimer <laughs> once. That's just that's yeah. just reality, folks. That's just reality. So Barbie's going to win the box office this weekend, but what's it going to do? Is it going yeah. to beat the, – with the last few weeks, they've now coined the term flop buster. These are movies that were – movies that were expected to do incredibly well – that underperformed, which is almost every movie Hollywood's putting out lately. Let's go through it. The Flash, flop buster. Transformers Rise of the Beasts, flop buster. Um, Emma, uh, Mission Impossible 7. Uh, jury's you know, still out, but jury's it, still, it, it could go that way. Well, jury's still out, but we did last week when we were talking about box office, um, we did go through the history of the Mission Impossible movies. They make respectable money stateside. They make way more money on a global scale. That's just that's just reality. When you look at the global box office, you know they uh, they do very well globally, not as well uh, in the United States. That's but actually true for James Bond movies as well. Last time I checked, though, I don't think the global is that impressive. Yeah, I, I checked them from. recently too. It was like a hundred yeah. and something or two hundred yeah. and something million. I think. Yeah. Now, Barbie isn't a sequel, okay, but it is a, an intellectual property with, uh, you know, God, I mean, it's been around since what 1953 was the mm -hmm. first Barbie, right? Right. So, so you've got all this brand recognition for Barbie. So it seems like something new and fresh, as opposed to Mission Impossible was the seventh movie. The Flash, like, how long have we heard about the Flash? We've heard about the Flash yeah. for years. That movie was originally supposed to come out in 2018. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they so, had a thousand fan screenings beforehand. Yeah, but. they had one. Oh, I think more than a thousand fan <laughs> screenings. I think everyone that wanted to see it saw it at the fan screening. And they, but, and they saw it for free. <laughs> exactly. So how do we feel this is going to perform in light of recent flop busters? And I'll point out these flop busters are all uh, sequels. And we're not talking about sequels like the second film, the seventh film, the Transformers movie is what the fifth Transformers movie Right? Yeah, it, something, something like that. Yeah. Bumblebee, Lots. like the Flash is like really sort of the the closing the book on the Snyderverse, right? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe Aquaman 2 is going to do that. Who knows? But but where do yeah. we think Barbie's going to land? And I will say this I think it's going to do very well. I think it might yeah. actually do better than Mission Impossible did last weekend because even trying to get tickets to it, all the Wednesday screenings, which was an early, they called it the Barbie Party fan screen. Every single seat was full, every single seat. Mm -hmm. And even when we went to get tickets last night, a couple of people joined our group at the last minute. They could only find like single seats here and there. So what, yeah. do you, what, are, you, what are your predictions? I will say this. Uh, I believe Barbie will have a great opening weekend and it'll drop off. I, the, the biggest thing that I walked away with was I don't know that there's repeat screen. Uh, there's there's going to be repeat screening after this. I don't think there's anything in there that's so inspiring That'll make you want to see it again. Right. And so uh, it will definitely beat Oppenheimer. It'll do very well. It may even take down Mission Impossible, but I think next weekend it's, it's gonna experience a huge drop. Yeah, yeah. I I I think it's I think it's gonna I think it's gonna do really well this weekend. Second weekend is always taking the temperature. It's does it have repeat business? Uh, uh you know, is it gonna get the repeat business? Is it gonna get the curiosity of people who thought about seeing it and then finally are like, well, I'll go see it because yeah. all my friends have seen it. I wanna, you know, be a part of that conversation. Yeah. Oppenheimer, so, like an actual bomb, is a slow burn. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. We'll, we'll 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 get into it, Dante. Any <laughs> predictions on on Barbie? Uh, you know, I think it's going to do well. Uh, first weekend, I think I don't see families really going out together mm -hmm. to watch this movie. I think it's going to be a bunch of girlfriends 
who right. uh, you know, and and gay friends hanging right. out, and they and they won't see it again, and they won't see it again because this is this isn't really a feel good movie. It's it's not a movie you're gonna walk away from saying, oh yeah, that was a good time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's the certainly... Barbie movie is not a good time. It's... it's not like you can't make a message movie, but that message should should be inspiring. You yes. know, it should make you yes. feel like you need to see that again. You need to hear that message again. You, you, know, you know what this movie should have did? This movie should have every girl walking away feeling like I'm happy I played with Barbies when I was younger. Yeah, you, and... you don't walk away feeling that. Mm-hmm. Or no, I mean, I, mean, no. I wouldn't know. I mean, I about that. La- I mean, like, I'm not talking about spoilers, <laughs> but the, like the last line of. The- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. Yeah, it's, we we. It was a long, like, depressing setup. To it. Nope. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. This depressing setup of of Barbie going to the gynecologist. It was just very bizarre to acknowledge. I mean, if if this was a real Barbie doll, if this was a real Barbie movie, she instead of going to the gynecologist, she would have filed her president presidential papers. Right, right. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm gonna go against Trump and DeSantis. You, you, know, <laughs> you, you know what this movie should have uh, had women feeling or a little girl's feeling they should walk out of her feeling like i am barbie and yeah you want they won't feel that yeah it's weird well so I, yeah yeah uh, any other final barbie thoughts before yeah. we pivot well the the theme is the thing that really bothered me um you know because you know the idea was you know barbie doesn't need ken uh ken doesn't need barbie and and i think at the end it, we we got to the conclusion of barbie doesn't need anybody no, we had just gone through this pandemic where we were cordoned off from everybody. We were isolated from everybody. And, and there's this idea that you don't need anybody. You be you. You decide what you want to be and you you go out and do it and to hell with everybody else. And I think that's this message of, of humanistic individualism it just goes counter to what we learned in the pandemic, which was we are social people. We need each other. Whether we're men, women, cross races and class, we need each other. And this movie goes completely against that. 